Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Tech News product review. Riddle me this, what's big, gray, resembles a wood stove on wheels, can handle 4,400 watts of solar input, is able to power the largest 120 volt household appliances such as a mini split or a furnace, can actually run your entire 30 amp RV, including the roof air conditioner, and is so weather resistant, it can live full time outdoors just as easy as a squirrel. It's the massive Renogy Lycan 5000 power box, of course, but is it any good? Let's find out. Inside the Lycan are a pair of 48 volt, 50 amp hour smart lithium iron phosphate batteries with a total capacity of 4,800 watt hours. These are rated 4,500 cycles to 80% capacity at room temperature 0.2 C charge rate. I do need to stress that the Lycan does in fact use heated batteries so it can continue to be charged down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. It also has active cooling, which allows it to be used up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit ambient temperature. So for everyone who's always complaining that lithium battery generators can't be used below freezing or in super hot desert conditions, you finally have your wish. Note that the Lycan can be expanded up to a whopping 19.2 kilowatt hours by adding additional external Renogy smart batteries. So you're not limited to the 4.8 kilowatts that's built in. As for size and weight, the Lycan weighs a bone crushing 265 pounds and is not for the faint of heart or back. It's also a significant size measuring 33 by 20 by 29 inches. So make sure wherever you decide to place it that you have plenty of space. As for build quality, the Lycan actually resembles a cast iron wood stove, except that it's made of what appears to be coated galvanized steel. It even has a glass door on the front that swings open like a wood stove, so you can get to all the switches and stuff inside. Now I'm betting you credits the Navy Beans that the base model in the CAD software when they were designing this was probably a wood stove. It certainly makes for a great table since it is flat on the top and made of steel, and it also makes a very interesting piece of furniture. It does have four caster wheels, so it can be pushed around on hard surfaces such as hardwood floors or concrete. But unless you want it to sink into the swamp like an X-Wing fighter, don't attempt to roll the thing on soft dirt. Now, if you take a closer look at the Lycan, you'll notice that all the outlets are in sealed outdoor rated boxes and the glass door has a rubber seal around it. The venting fans are actually on the bottom of the unit and the solar inputs are water resistant. So believe it or not, the Lycan is actually made to be used outdoors. It is IP55 rated, which means, and I'm quoting this from the guidelines, complete protection against contact with live or moving parts inside the enclosure protection against harmful deposits of dust. The ingress of dust is not totally prevented, but cannot enter in an amount sufficient to interfere with satisfactory operation of the machine. Water projected by a nozzle against the enclosure from any direction shall have no harmful effect. So while you can't dunk this in water, and I don't know why you'd ever want to, you can absolutely leave it outside 24-7, 365 in all kinds of weather conditions. And that sounds literally crazy. Oh, did I mention it actually comes with its own very set of keys, which allows you to lock the front and rear panels and keep all the secrets inside safe. Hmm. It's almost like this thing's been designed by the government. Now, as for the design of the display, this isn't your typical solar generator. It's really just a large metal box full of off-the-shelf components from Renogy. That means that this charger slash inverter slash solar controller is actually an all-in-one unit you can buy right off their website right now. Now I could do a dedicated review on that all-in-one unit just on its own, and maybe I'll do that in a future video. What I'm getting to is that this is a tiny screen. It's not a touch screen. You got four buttons below, which allows you to program it. 
Now you can push the buttons to scroll through the different settings, but you'll never find a state of charge percent or time to charge discharge or, or stuff like that. You can find such things as amps and watts coming in and out, but it's not the most friendly user interface. Fortunately, this is where the Renogy DC Home app comes in. Okay, here's the Renogy app. This is the main screen after you sync it to the Lycan and have your Bluetooth turned on. As you can see, there's pretty much nothing here. You get a little icon at the top that graphically fills up to show you how much battery you have. In my case, it's 82.67%. And over here, it tells you how long it can be used for, and that only comes up if the inverter is running, which currently is not. It says fully charged in 0.45 hours, so it will tell you right there how long it's gonna take to charge the full. And down here, it has both of your batteries paired up in the Lycan. So you can see here, it says 82.67%. It shows a lightning bolt saying that it's charging. Uh, currently, it is charging at 38.42 amps, which isn't any help whatsoever. I'd much rather see watts here, because you have to multiply this by 48 volts to figure out how many watts that is. There is no watts on this whatsoever, and that's one of the big disappointments with this app. You can go ahead and click on battery, and it will bring up a little gauge that will show you graphically how much power you have, 84.51%. It does tell you the maximum capacity, present capacity of the battery in amp hours again. Again, not watt hours, amp hours, which again, doesn't really help you. Battery level. Now down here, battery one and battery two are their own tabs. So battery one, it gives you the level, capacity, all this other stuff, you know, firmware version. You can change temperature. Uh, it will show you the cell status or the cell voltage, so you can actually see the individual voltage of each cell down here. And to get the battery too, you just slide over this way, and it pretty much gives you all the exact same information for battery one and battery two. And up here, what it does, is it combines the stats that you have at the bottom. Now that's it, and there's a bunch of stupid social things in here, account information, but uh, that's it for the app. As for inverter size, the Lycan sports a massive 3,500 watt pure sine inverter with a 7,000 watt surge, but is a bit odd in the fact that it only offers a single 20 amp AC outlet and a single 30 amp AC outlet. They actually expect you to use power strips and extension cords in an emergency situation, and I'm fine with that. It makes sense because this does have an IP55 rating. If you plan on keeping this outdoors, you don't want all those exposed outlets. You just want one outlet that's protected and you can run a cord off of that and that box stays water resistant. The Lycan truly shines in its ability to easily be wired into a home breaker box using a transfer switch. And unlike EcoFlow and Blue Eddy, you don't need a special converter box or expensive panel to do this, although Renogy does offer their own brands. The Lycan actually comes included with instructions in the user manual as to how to do this. Of course, in the USA, you are expected to have a licensed electrician hook that up for you. Now, do know that the Lycan cannot output 240 volts. The inverter in this is 120 volts only, and it cannot be paired up in parallel with another Lycan to produce 240 volts. This is specifically a 120 volt only output device. Now the inverter does offer three modes of operation. One is called PV priority, which will use solar plus battery to power the loads. Once the battery drops low enough, then AC power will pass through to run the loads. Utility priority mode acts like a standard UPS or uninterruptible power supply. It will actually use AC to power the loads at all times unless the AC power gets shut off. Then solar and or battery will take over. Then there's raw inverter mode and that will power the inverter only with the battery until the battery drops to such a low level that AC power will then pass through and power the loads. That latter mode would be useful for charging up the battery during the day with solar and then using the battery at night to power the loads, basically to save you on electricity. As for ways to charge, there are only two. One is AC power with this honking 20 amp cord. Of course, the charger is built in. And then the other option is of course, solar. Note this does not, and I'll repeat, does not support 12 volt charging in any way, shape or form. You can't plug a cigarette lighter into this and charge it from 12 volts or even 24 volts. Now there is an expansion port on the side of this, which you can hook up 48 volt Renogy batteries to it. Now, because AC charging and solar charging are handled by the internal Renogy 48 volt solar inverter charger, 
it's very configurable. It actually offers four different modes of battery charging depending on how you have it configured, and this is kind of similar to what Blue Eddy's top products offer. First mode is PV Priority. It'll make full use of the sun during the day to charge the batteries and then will fail over if there is no solar. Since this can charge with a whopping 4400 watts of solar, assuming you have that much installed and sky conditions are perfect, you can charge this massive 4800 watt hour battery in under 90 minutes or from 0 to 80% in less than an hour. That's pretty darn fast. Mode 2 is Utility Priority Mode. It'll actually charge from AC power first, then fail over to solar if AC is unavailable. Since the Lycan can charge at 20 amps from AC power, it can recharge the batteries from dead to full in about two and a half hours. Mode three is hybrid charging. Solar and AC power will actually work together to charge at the absolute fastest speed possible. Priority is given to solar. If there isn't enough solar, then it will charge just with AC power. This is actually the fastest way to charge the Lycan, and it'll max out at 100 amps, which is the maximum charge rate of the batteries. That'll allow you to charge this from dead to full in just 1.3 hours. That is super fast. Mode 4 is simply solar only. It will ignore AC input even if it's plugged in, just charge off of solar. Now, as for solar input specifications, the input voltage starts at 60 volts and handles up to 145 volts. So what does this actually mean to those of you who don't speak electricity? It means that you need a minimum of three 12 volt solar panels to charge the Lycan or two 24 volt residential panels. Now, let me say this one more time. You need a total of three that's this many 12 volt solar panels in order to charge the Lycan. If you have 24 volt residential panels, and you know these are like the really large six foot long ones, then you only need two of those. Now the reason why I'm making such a big deal about this is when Blue Eddy put out their solar generator that required two solar panels to charge, a good portion of my audience glazed over that fact, wasn't paying attention, they only bought one solar panel and they're wondering why they couldn't charge their Blue Eddy. So I just want to make it clear that you need at least three 12 volt solar panels or a pair of 24 volt solar panels just to start charging the Lycan. Of course, the more solar panels you put on here, the better. Now, what about the upper limits? 145 volts mean you can run up to six 12 volt solar panels in series, assuming the maximum voltage called VOC of the solar panel is actually under 24 volts. This also means you can use up to three 24 volt solar panels assuming their VOC, which is listed on the solar panel, is under 48 volts. Note that the input current for the Lycan is a massive 80 amps. However, there's only two pair of MC4 inputs on this and they're rated at 20 amps each. So the actual input of the Lycan as it sits is 40 amps. That's still a heck of a lot of amps. Now this makes sense because 10 gauge MC4 cable that you use for solar panels is limited to 20 amps anyway. Also note that the pair of inputs on the side of this are wired in parallel. And it tells you in the manual that both solar inputs need to be the same voltage. So if you put three 200 watt solar panels on one side, you have to put three 200 watt solar panels on the other side so that the voltage is the same on each leg. Now you don't have to put something on the second leg, but if you do use the second leg, it has to match the first leg. And don't mix and match solar panels unless you actually know what you're doing because the results are probably gonna be much worse than the total if you add it up on paper. Now what about 12 volt output and USB? Eh, Lycan has none of that nonsense. You're gonna need a different solar generator to run that 12 volt fridge or charge your cell phone, and then you can use this to charge that solar generator. As for the warranty, Renogy offers a three-year manufacturer warranty on the Lycan. Now the Lycan's a pretty complicated beast when it comes to all these settings on here. So behind the glass curtain, you have the inverter settings back here. I'll go through all the screens very quickly just so you can see what they look like. You can see it goes through PV, then it goes through inverter, and it goes through input and output for the battery. And then these are the buttons you use to program it. So you have set, enter, up and down, and that's pretty much how you control it. It's not a touch screen. 
This is the Bluetooth module. This is what connects to your mobile device. That's powered on all the time unless you turn the batteries off. These are the breakers. So you have breakers for solar one and two, because there's two actual separate solar inputs on this. So solar one and solar two got their own breakers. You got the breaker for the main battery, which you can shut off. And then you have these surge protectors. This is lightning protection in case uh, lightning would strike this since this can be outdoors. And down here you have an AC output, which is this is the main uh, household power, 20 amps. Then you have the RV output, 30 amps. And then you have an AC input breaker. So these are breakers. They'll trip if there's ever a short circuit or whatever, but they're basically on and off switches for you as well. And of course, the front of the Lycan opens up so you can see all the goodies inside. So here's the 48 volt solar inverter charger standalone. So if this ever breaks or has a problem, you can replace it. Here's all the bare wiring right down to the bus bars. And this is a temperature controller. So so it detects to see what the temperature is in the box and it will turn these fans on if necessary. Don't stick your tongue on any of these because these are straight outputs from the inverter. Like I mentioned before, there's a little switch back here. I don't know if you can barely see it or not. You flick this into the middle to turn off the inverter and forward to turn it on. If you push it all the way to the back, that's a remote. This doesn't come with a remote. As for the inputs, these are all watertight containers. So basically what you do is you plug in your cable here and then you run the wire through this little rubber grommet and then you close this until it locks. And then that will make the connection waterproof. So you can leave this outside with it plugged in. It's not going to be a problem. Here is your 20 amp output. So this is for output. This top one is for input. They're clearly labeled like everything on here. There's your 30 amp RV hookup. This is a grounding tab. So you can go ahead and ground and you can see right there it says that's the ground. As for inputs, these are the solar inputs I was using before. So there's two sets. So these come off. So you can see these are MC4. Straight up old school MC4 connectors. So you got one pair good for 20 amps and then a second pair good for 20 amps. These internally are connected in parallel. There's only one MPPT solar controller in here. So you have to put the same voltage here as you put here. You can't have different groups of solar panels with different voltages. It just doesn't work. This is the input for external battery. So if you want to expand this, you can plug their smart batteries in through here and then this is a communication port that is used to talk to the smart batteries so you can see here this is basically an rj45 ethernet cable and that will connect to the battery and then this is the physical power input again everything has waterproof connections opening the back of the lichen you'll see some more scary stuff all this heavy duty wiring and here are the smart lithium iron phosphate batteries. There is a pair of 48 volt, 50 amp self-heating batteries inside here. Yes, self-heating batteries. Like I said, this is actually for use outdoors. So you can see all the wiring is actually very well labeled. So if you ever need to do any work on this thing, every wire in here is labeled to what it does. It's positive or negative. Here's some communication cables. And you actually can turn the batteries on and off by pressing this little button here. It's really hard to see because it's dark in there, but you hold that down for a second. You have to do it on one battery and it'll turn both batteries on because they are wired together digitally. That's why they call them smart. That's right. Shop smart. Shop S-smart. This here right here is actually an air filter system. So this is where the air comes in and then there's a filter behind this. You can see right here, here is your air filter. So it keeps all the dust, spiders, ants, all that garbage out of your Renogy. So this is how it gets the IP55 rating because it wouldn't, it can't allow dust inside. Otherwise you can imagine how quickly this would fill up with little creatures and dirt and dust being outside. And of course, I took the lichen into my secret laboratory here where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it. But since it doesn't have a DC output, I can't do a double fisted test. That means today it's only going to be one fist.
Since there's no DC test, there's no DC result. However, the AC capacity test, this thing scored an absolutely incredible 4,640 watt hours out of 4,800, or an amazing 97%. Now, either the inverter inside uses no power at all, which would break the laws of physics, or that pair of 2,400 watt hour batteries is a little bit underrated. And since I'm not keen on breaking any laws of physics, I'm pretty sure it's the latter. They do claim 95% efficiency on the built-in inverter, which means those batteries are probably closer to 5,000 watt hours, and that's probably why they call this the Renogy Lycan 5000, because I was wondering, why don't they call it the 4800 since it's got 4800 watt hours worth of batteries? Well, they're probably closer to 5000. So it's always nice to see when a company underrates their product and we get a nice surprise like this during testing. In any case, this makes the Renogy Lycan the best test result ever scored on Hobotech to date. Congratulations, Renogy. First test is sine wave under load. I have a 1600 watt load on the floor. The Renogy is holding 118 volts, 60 hertz with a clean sine wave. Now because the Lycan can actually handle 3500 watts from its pure sine inverter, it's gonna take a lot of load to get that to max out. So I have a heater on the floor. I have an 1800 watt hair dryer. And of course I have finally dun, 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 the solar degenerator. Okay, so you guys can see right there, it says 1.32. That's 1,320 watts. So this shows it in kilowatt hours and not in watts. And this temperature right here is the inverter temperature. So you can see it's currently 46 degrees centigrade. So let's go ahead and get started. Now let's add some solar degenerator. Okay, there we are at 3.5 kilowatts or 3,500 watts. This is the rated capacity of this inverter. Let's see how far we can take it, 3.6. We're getting an overload warning. 3.7, it's starting to beep. 3.8, 3.9, 4, 4,000 watts. Boop, ah, ah, ah. And there we go, it shuts down at 4,000 watts with an overload. Now, depending on how you have this set up, you can actually program this inverter to automatically reset itself after a certain period of time, I think it's a minute or two, and it will try again automatically up to three times before it will just sit there and beep all day at you, telling you that there is a serious fault. Now, the only way to reset this manually is to open the thing up and reset the inverter. So that means opening the sucker up, then down here underneath, you have to feel for the switch and then be very patient because it takes quite a while for this thing to shut down. Then you can go ahead and turn the switch back on towards you. I can't show you the switch, it's way under there. You just have to feel it, feel for it. So you flick it towards you and then the inverter charger comes back on. So yeah, this is a little different. This isn't your typical jackery. This is actually a lot more complicated than that. And yes, yeah, so all these beeps, Every time the power changes, so if you are charging from solar, it'll beep. If the AC wall power comes on, it'll beep. If AC wall power goes off, it'll beep. If solar shuts off, it'll beep. You can turn all those beeps off, because I hate them too. <laughs> but they're there in case you have this in a different room and you actually want to hear uh, if it overloads or not. So this next test is the inverter capacity or what we call the heat soak test, where we're gonna run this at its 3,500 watt rating for at least five minutes to see if there's any problems with overheating or anything like that. I highly, highly doubt it on this model. This has so much active cooling inside of it, it's almost ridiculous, but I gotta test it anyway, otherwise you guys will flame me in the comments. So here we go, we're gonna take it up to 3,500 watts and let it go for five minutes. There you are at 3,500 watts. We'll go ahead and start the stopwatch and let it go for five minutes. And just as we expected, it's still at 3,500 watts, no problem. So that was obviously a ridiculously easy test for the Lycan. Let's push it to 3,800 watts for five minutes and see if it will handle that. It is running 3,800 watts. It is beeping, but let's see how long it goes. All right, it made it one minute at 3,800 watts before the inverter shut down. How about 3,650 watts? 
it made it just over three minutes at 3,850 watts before it shut down. So while that means you can stretch the 3,500 watt inverter on the Lycan to 36, 3,700 watts, just expect it's gonna shut down in a couple of minutes. That's still pretty good overhead. While the inverter fans are running, it's kind of hard to hear inside that case, but let's see what it registers at. About 48, 49 decibels from about a meter away. That's pretty darn quiet. And the fans in here are large, so they turn a lot slower than they would in a smaller generator, meaning that it's gonna be a lot quieter when it's pushing a lot of air through there. But even at maximum, it's not gonna push more than 50 decibels. So not gonna really be a problem in any room, even a room that you might be sleeping in. It doesn't make any kind of harsh or loud, whiny, clicky noises. It's just like a normal fan sound. Next test is the max charge rate test. Now this is where things get a little sketch because the Lycan supports 4,400 watts of solar up to 145 volts. It's from 60 to 145 volts. And it will simultaneous charge from AC power an additional 2,400 watts. So the Lycan can actually charge at 6,800 watts. My main variable voltage charger, the one I've used in previous videos, the 3000 watt one, it blew up. I was doing something with it, it blew up. In the meantime, I ordered this $600 charger from China. It took literally a month to get here. I got it yesterday. So this should cover most bases for most of the solar generators I test. However, it's still not gonna cut it for the Lycan because this can do 20 amps, the Lycan can take 40 amps, okay? so. I would actually need two of these on two separate circuits in this room in order to push it to the 4,400 watt limit. So since I don't have my other charger that can do a high voltage, and I only got this one, we're only gonna be able to test it up to whatever this can push into it. I know these big ass power boxes now, are they're getting so ridiculously large and so powerful that trying to find testing equipment, especially to charge them with simulated solar, is getting harder and harder. Now, I know some of you are gonna say, why don't you just hook up 5,000 watts of solar in your yard and charge it in there? If you have any idea how big 5,000 watts of solar is, so now it detected 60 volts. So it's exactly 60 volts where it starts charging. Okay, I just maxed out the current on this. So it's pushing 18.2 amps at 62 volts. It says it's charging at 1.07 kilowatts or 1,070 watts of simulated solar. Okay, the manual for the Lycan says that it can support up to 145 volts of solar. And then in parentheses, it says max of 150 volts. So I didn't understand that. It's, the max is either 145 or 150. There's the beep, that means it is detecting the solar. We got 144 volts. Watch the amps here, they should start climbing. 144 volts. 50 amps, we have 2,500 watts of simulated solar going in. So 2,500, it's bouncing around a little bit, 2,510, and there goes the breaker. So my outlets here are standard 20 amp for a workshop, and you know, pulling 2,500 watts for more than a few seconds is going to trip the breaker, which is exactly what happened. Okay, so what about the claim in the manual that it can handle a max of 150 volts? So I have this set to 146 volts, which is one volt over the 145 it says in the mail before the parentheses. Watch what happens. 146 volts, and we get an error. So we're getting an error from the inverter. It's basically an over volt condition. So as soon as I turn the solar off, it will clear and correct itself. So if you're wondering how hard is the 145 volt limit, it's very hard. If you cross 145 at all, the inverter will scream and yell at you and it will not charge. So be aware of whatever solar panels you put on this. You can't cross 145 volts ever. Now I can simulate simultaneous charging. So I'm gonna use this to pump in about 2,500 watts of solar while it's charging from the wall behind me at the same time. So right now it's pulling 2,000 watts from my wall outlet behind me as soon as I flip the switch, it should add another 2,500 watts to the mix. There we go, 4,500 watts of charging. It is possible, simultaneous charging from the wall and solar. In fact, you can take that number a lot higher if you had more solar. So what about inverter charging noise? Is it loud? 
53 decibels, so it is louder while it's charging than discharging, which is weird. Usually it's the other way around. Usually the inverter is louder when it's powering something rather than charging. But you have to remember too, this thing can charge at almost twice the speed that it can discharge. So of course it's gonna dedicate more fans to the heat generated by charging. Musician's favorite amp interference test. Now, what do you guys think? Do you think that the inverter in the Lycan is gonna pass this test or not? I think it absolutely is. If it doesn't, it'll be very disappointing. So let's go ahead. I got this set up. Instead of turning the inverter on the Lycan, since that's a complicated process, I just have it set up to flick the switch. It'll send power from the inverter to the amp. So let's find out. Three, two, one. Quiet as a mouse. So there you have it. It works perfectly fine for amplifiers, which means it's good for ham radios and other sensitive electronics that have amplifier circuitry in it. So what do I like about the Lycan? Well, the list of pros is long and I've already covered a lot of my favorite stuff in this video. I mean, 4,400 watts of solar input, 6,800 watts of total charging, fully configurable UPS modes and transfer modes, a clean 3,500 watt inverter, waterproof with heated batteries, remote app, etc., etc. I think you get it. One thing I do want to mention that I didn't cover yet is that they actually included a 30 amp RV hookup for RVers' immediate use. And yes, this is a true 30 amps, unlike other solar generators. So you can finally run that roof air conditioner. And the fact that the Lycan is fully weather resistant and has heated batteries means you can leave this outside hooked up to solar 24 seven in most environments. And that's while powering your RV. Now this is a world first for any kind of battery power generator. So what don't I like about the Lycan? Well, while the product is user-friendly enough and the manual is absolutely fantastic, some users are gonna certainly feel overwhelmed at the technical scope of this product. The startup procedure alone is five steps and it requires you to open both the front and back of this to turn it on and then another five steps in reverse order to shut it off. And you can't have this plugged into solar or AC power when you try to do that, otherwise it'll just sit there and stare at you. So if you're looking for a jackery ease of use, this product is not gonna be for you. The Lycan is more of a tinkerer's paradise. It expects that you'll wanna push its buttons and play with it and set it up for your individual use case. Although you don't have to, you can just plug it in and use it right out of the box without touching a darn thing. But to get the most out of it, you're gonna wanna dig into the inverter manual and go through a lot of those settings that I talked about earlier to set it up the way you want to set it up. Then of course, there's the literal elephant in the room. I have this propped up on a 500 pound scissor lift just so I could have it in this frame with me during this video. I can't lift this thing up. In fact, me and a friend of mine had a hard time picking it up. Hitting the scales at around the weight of a dual sport motorcycle means this isn't really all that portable. I mean, sure, it rolls around on its little caster wheels perfectly on concrete or wood floors, but you're gonna need Hulk Hogan or The Rock to get it up the stairs or across any kind of rough terrain. It's also almost three feet long. Just something to be aware of, since it is metal, you could easily paint it up in camo or decorate it like a fireplace to keep prying eyes away. Okay, those are just baby food gripes. The real disappointment here is with the app. I was really hoping that I could program the inverter through the app, but at this time it only syncs up with the smart batteries. This means there is zero remote access to the brains of the unit, which is that inverter charger. You do have remote access to the batteries and it's nice to be able to geek out on battery stats, but with no support for viewing the amount of watts coming in or watts going out, it's a real bummer. Sure, you can see how many amps are passing through the battery and then do a bunch of math in your head to figure out how many watts there are going through, but at this price point, you shouldn't have to do that. Now, this is a brand new product from Renogy and the app is obviously not finished yet as I'm actually running a beta version. It is entirely possible and likely probable that Renogy will push out a firmware update in the future and offer more features. You can still see the solar input and watts and the wattage coming in in the built-in screen. So the data is there, 
it's just not supported yet in the app. Now for everyone's favorite part, product price. Now exercising my infamous silver tongue and doing everything short of offering sexual favors to Renogy, I did manage to convince them to provide my viewers a totally banging 12% off promotion for a limited time. Now before I tell you the price, you have to understand really what you're getting. This is basically a fully modular, end user repairable, expandable, name brand, 4500 cycle power station with top of the line components. It's also weatherproof. They seriously cut no corners on this product. This is the first quote unquote solar generator I've ever reviewed that could do 10 hard years of labor and only come out with a couple of cool tattoos. I mean, for heck's sake, you can leave it outside running in bad weather. It's made of steel and glass with watertight everything. If by some miracle you kill the batteries in 10 to 15 years, eh, throw them away and put some new ones in it. The inverter charger in this will work with just about any kind of battery, so as long as it's 48 volts, you should be fine. Maybe it'll be some fusion battery technology in 20 years you can upgrade to. That's how darn cool this thing actually is. Now, I've been kind of a Renogy fanboy for many, many years, but I have to admit, this is one of the most badass solar generators I've ever laid my hands on. Okay, now as for the price. Retail, this goes for $51.99. And yes, yes, I know coffee is now shooting out of your nose at the speed of sound. Grab a napkin because Hobotech's got you covered. I have a fat discount for you, and that's fat with a PH. With my 12% discount code, this thing ends up actually being less than a buck a watt hour. 95 cents to be exact. Yes, that's actually less than the new Jackery, making this a solid bang for the buck deal. The final price, $45.75 for a limited time, and that includes shipping to your door, which is probably 300 bucks by itself. Now, if you actually go on Renogy's website and price out all the individual components inside this thing, it works out to be almost the same cost as if you would have DIY built this yourself. Except of course you're getting this badass steel waterproof case. You can tell your friends is an electric stove or better yet, a time machine. They'll probably believe you. This glass window is just begging for a flux capacitor. This is a fully plug and play, ready to go power station that virtually anyone can use, but it's also very configurable if you need it to be. So who's the market for this product? Now, this is obviously aimed at the home backup market, boondockers and the off-grid crowd. You could power a cabin or a tiny home with this pretty easily, and it can run critical loads at your home during a blackout. Or you can program it to save money on your electric bill by using solar pass-through to run power-hungry stuff. 4,400 watts of solar is a lot. It could actually pay for itself by saving your electric bill over the long term. Oh, and if you actually hardwire this in your home, you can claim the federal tax credit, which is 20 something percent for 2023. And since this is fully usable outdoors in any weather, including below freezing conditions, and offers a 30 amp true RV hookup, RVers could certainly use this too while boondocking, assuming they have somewhere to haul it, like the back of a truck bed or on a trailer. Now, as for recommended solar, I recommend giving this beast as much solar as you can afford. At least 900 watts minimum, because you want to be able to charge this in one solar day. I am recommending Renogy's own 900 watt solar panel kit, which is two 450 watt residential glass panels. Their VOC, or maximum voltage, is only 41 volts, so you can safely run up to three on each leg for a total of six panels or 2,700 watts of solar. Now, if you're interested in those Renogy 450 watt panels, I do have a promo code in the description that will knock some money off. I will be doing a separate video later on charging this with those 450 watt panels. Now, if those big glass panels are just too much for you, you want something smaller and lighter, I suggest their 175 watt flex panels. Now, I know what you're saying, flex panels are trash. Well, they used to be. Unlike the total trash of the past, the Renogy panels are ETFE coated and high quality with a five year warranty. They only weigh about six pounds each and you'll need a minimum of three to charge. So with their VOC being 24 volts, you can run up to actual six in series on each leg for a total of 12 panels for 2100 watts. I have a promo code as well for those panels down in the description. 
Now finally, if you want actual folding panels or something even cheaper than what Renogy offers, I recommend getting solar panels from Hobotech.tv. I do have discounts on Bouge RV 180 and 200 watt panels and folding panels from 100 watts up to 400 watts. As always, link is in the description. And if you're interested in the Renogy Lycan, the link with that fat discount is in the description. I'm also gonna go ahead and put a link right here at the bottom of the screen along with a QR code that you can scan. It'll take you right to their website where you can go ahead and check it out. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. RV Golf Guy, Andrew Von Rupp, Brian Lieber, John Stacey Soroka, Dr. Steve Eisenhower.